Okay guys, I'm with the Mini again, um, and I've got some polypropylene rope. In this video, I'm going to show you how to tie up ropes for drivers and uh, people who use the, uh, the road. Um, I've got a towing hitch in the car here. Uh, be warned, if you're going to tow motor vehicles out, I personally would use a recovery service because they're going to have proper bars and stuff to stop cars crashing into each other. But if you're in the odd emergency and you might need to tow, just say pull something out of the mud. mud. It's only desperate emergency. Okay, um, let's do the basic hitches. I'm going to go for the basic hitches that uh, drivers use. Sorry about the road noise, I'm in a lay-by. Quite appropriate, I thought. <laughs> okay, so first hitch. Um, polypropylene ropes can be used a lot. I'm probably going to do a video on showing you how to do splices because uh, repairing ropes is a good idea. First hitch is the round turn and two halves. So you go round, around again and then one hit and I've done that wrong let's do it again round round again come underneath one hitch two hitch you want to make that a little bit more secure you can add an extra couple of more hitches in so I need a bit more rope to do it with <laughs> but you get the idea Okay, so that's the round turn and two halves. And you can keep adding half hitches if, you know, usually up to four if you want to make it really secure. But it's usually called the round turn and two halves. Next one is the clove hitch. You come round, you go over the top of the rope, come in underneath and pull through. And that's called the clove hitch. Now the beauty of the clove hitch is you can put it on if you've got something like a tow hitch like this you can make one loop another loop stick the second loop underneath the first loop put it over boom okay now you can make this uh, round uh, clove hitch a bit more secure so you come around you go around again and then you come back underneath and tuck it underneath the, the original loop. So you've, you've done an extra turn, that makes your clove hitch that little bit more secure. Okay, next one, the bowline. So usually the bowline is an unslipping knot. You might want a knot that doesn't slip. So you go round, and you make it, and then you make a loop. I'll make it that way. And so rabbit comes out, round the tree, goes back down, you've got your bowline. So it's a knot that doesn't slip. Now you can do, you can do, oops, like that bit. what you can do to make it more secure. So let's do it again. So you have to turn, turn it back towards you. Out, round the tree, round the tree again, back down the hole. Make some more secure bowline. But they're really hard to undo bowlings, so they're not really the best of knot. There's another knot I learned in climbing, which is like what you have to do is you have to do basically a figure of eight knot, because there's a thing called an overhand knot, which is basically like that for a stopper knot. And I'll explain about that later in another knot I'm going to show you. But this one, it's called a figure of eight, so you can under, over, and under so you get that kind of figure of eight shape okay then what you do you go round and then you follow the figure of eight pattern back through <clears throat> so I learned this when I did climbing at university and then You've got your figure of eight knot, which is a slope better. And the beauty of this is that you can actually break the knot open easily. So it's slightly better than a bowline. And if you want to make it a little bit more secure, what you can do is just sort of tie little stopper knots in the end. Okay guys, the axle hitch. Now this is usually done with vehicles with a solid axle like this one. But well, this is a an old trailer bed. So solid axles. I wouldn't recommend it because you might break an axle or horse some carts. So 
it's an old hitch, it's not really used, but as it's not for drivers and uh, road users who might as well teach it. Bit of a historical knot. Okay, so you thread it loop over like that. Okay, and then you get the working end, it's the end that uh, you tie the knots with, the other end goes off connected to the other vehicle. And basically you come underneath, which I'm going to go underneath and then around a couple of loops in between the two loops on the axle. So like so, and then you strangle it. So basically you're strangling those two, two loops and then you either tie a bowline down here or I've heard one thing that you can do is you can tie what's called a midshipman's um, hitch. <clears throat> like so. And I will show you how to tie a midshipman's hitch when I do the odd couple of camping knots. There we go, the axle hitch. Okay, so this is one way you could use the uh, axle hitch. Okay, so um, now we've done that, let's demonstrate a couple of more, one more hitch before we go on to a, a log towing hitch. Okay, okay, okay. let's uh, move that off. Now, what you can do, very similar to an axle, very, very similar hitch, I saw this on a on somebody's YouTube uh, channel, link down below, what you do, it's, it's kind of like a towing rope, it's in the Pageley's Book of Knots, not that I have a copy, but anyway. Um, you just basically thread it through a loop like that, and then a second loop uh, like that. That's another tow rope hitch. I suppose you could reinforce it with a, an extra one if you wanted. Um, like that. Whatever, do not use this for climbing or use a life note, because if, you, if it slackens off, it can easily come undone and then, oh, it could be a nasty accident. One thing you can do, just uh, instead of, you could do a few loops or even just the one loop if you wanted to, and then just finish off with your basic bowline or your um, mid shipman's hitch like I'm going to demonstrate here. Just like that. Okay, and the advantage is you've got a tow rope that you can actually adjust in length. Okay, now onto a logging pull hitch. Okay guys, so a logging hitch. Now let's just suppose you've got a log in a road and you need some way to uh, move it. Here's a sort of an example of, of something. So a log. Okay, so um, what you probably need to do, you to tie it to your car, you probably need to do something called a timber hitch. It's quite simple, you just go around, um, come back, loop, and then wrap it around several times like that. Okay, so there you go, that's your timber hitch. It's usually used for towing masts from ships and stuff. Um, you probably have seen something like this on a nylon string guitar. Now to uh, reinforce this, you could do what's a marlin hitch, you make a loop. But this, this bit of timber's got a bit more uh, to it. And um, there's a, a marlin hitch, and you probably want to do another thing as well, like so. And that's called a marlin hitch. Okay, so timber hitch with a couple of marlin hitches, and that's how you can successfully tow a piece of timber. Okay, now I'm going to do a couple of camping hitches. Okay guys, now uh, for this camping knot, now would you have, I don't have a tent, but I'm using the side of the car and I'm using sort of a broken area on the ground to demonstrate. This is called a, was what you'd call a taut line. Now, yes, you can do sort of like, I've um, seen on YouTube, they do these like lines where they have a, a truck is hitch and some other hitch to put up a tarp, but I, I won't do that. Unless you want to, I, I, I can do that for you. But I think most likely if you're gonna go camping, you're gonna have a tent. So I'm gonna demonstrate something here. Now let's imagine the scenario that you've got to a campsite and your tent is usually when you adjust a, a taut line, the, the lines of a tent, they have a little a piece of wood or a piece of metal, or some 
uh, the modern terms, a piece of plastic. But if it breaks, then you're stuck and your holiday can be ruined. So in that situation, you do a thing called the taut line hitch. And they each teach you to the scouts, and I'm going to teach you how to do it. So this is the this one, and uh, show you how it's done. Okay, okay. Now, the taut line hitch, obviously, you come around the your peg. What you do is you go around, okay, around again. So I just need a, actually, I'm just need a bit, bit, bit more, a uh, bit more here. Actually, let's take off the peg first. Okay. So what you do is you, you get your loop, you go round. Okay, round once, round twice, and you go back over the top, round again, and tuck it underneath. So it's two loops on the bottom, one on the top. Okay, you tighten that down. What we get, I'll put that over, we get an adjustable taut line hitch. Okay, so that's the taut line hitch. I've just uh, demonstrated. Now, to improve this, there is one called the midshipman's hitch, and it's the one that I used for the axle hitch and the other tow line towing hitch. Very similar to a taut line hitch, and I'll do that again. <clears throat> so, very similar to a taut line hitch, you do the first loop, which is closer to the peg. First, so t two loops are closer to the peg, and the last loop is up near the tent. So first loop, now instead of going over again like the taut line hitch, this one, second loop crosses over the first loop before doing the top loop at the top, and then tighten it all down. It's slightly different to a taut line hitch, except it's got that little crossover. And that's called a midshipman's hitch that I've been uh, demonstrating. It's a slightly stronger uh, hitch to the taut line hitch. Okay, so that's the taut line hitch and the midshipman's hitch. Next, I'm going to go on and do um, stuff to actually tie loads down to vehicles and tensioning knots to, to enable you to do that. That's next. Okay guys, back to a noisy lay-by for this one. Uh, thought it would be appropriate. <laughs> right, so, this knot is going to be the first tie-down knot. What it's going to be, I've just got uh, a hoodie here, is called the Canadian uh, Jam Knot, which uh, <clears throat> is uh, ideal for uh, small items, especially uh, if you've got like a blanket or a coat, maybe even a tool roll, then you need to just uh, roll it up. Okay, for a few uh, vehicles to go past. Okay, the first thing you need to, to learn with the Canadian tie down is the handover knot, which is just a simple one of those, like I showed earlier. Handover knot, you do two of them, one you do tight. Now you can even do a a loop knot if you wanted to, which I'll do on the next one. But basically, you do another handover knot, but you don't tighten it up. You take the cord underneath your item, thread it through, and basically just pull it tight. Keep pulling it tight, and it tightens down like that. And you can pull the other one and it loosens off. Big truck. Okay, and to secure it off, make a loop. And secure it off like that. Okay. Okay, I'll just demonstrate that again. For this one, I can even just do a handover loop. We've got a loop instead of a knot. Basic handover knot. Round. Underneath. Pull it tight. Screw it off. Little loop. Put it 
screw it, pull it tight. Now, one method, or if you've got this, you don't want this flapping around going into, so for example, if you tie it to a motorbike or a bicycle, you don't want it flapping around going into the wheel. And anything you tie down, you really want any loose ends to tie off. So one method you can do, and some people do, pull the rope up like that, wrap it around, Put it through one of the loops, pull the loop tight, and thread it underneath. I don't like doing that. What I like to do is uh, wrap it around a few times, and then either tie it onto that, or tie it back on itself on something loose. And that stops it wrapping around. Now, this is ideal for smaller items. I'll show a picture of it on a, on a on a bicycle. So in a bicycle, you actually wrap around the, the rack. The same with a motorbike. And like I said, you don't want stuff. I've sort of demonstrated this and this. Photographs. So you don't want things flapping around. Okay, for anything bigger, anything more bulky, you need to go for a proper sort of like tensioning knot, which I'm going to show next. Okay guys, so uh, let's tell you how to tie down. Okay, so I've got a typical roof bar you get on the car here. I've tied it uh, with a clove hitch, rolling hitch, round turn two halves. I, I personally use a, something like a rolling hitch. I've got one with like a reinforced clove hitch on the other side. Um, but, but I showed you earlier on. It's basically a clove hitch that's reinforced. Over my load, if it's a round load I'd wrap it around just to stop the, like a round load rolling around. I could demonstrate with uh, my uh, empty coffee cup. Instead of like holding the load down, I'd go like that. It just stops it rolling around. That's what I would personally do if I was tying like, a round load or a bundle of stuff. Okay. okay, so now what a lot of mistake people do is they just go under like that and they try and tension it like that and they, they can't get the tension on. And then they try and then throw it over. And it just, you know, by the time they come back, this all gets loose and then you're fiddling around trying to get it tight. It doesn't work. So what you do is you, there's about three kind of knots that you can do, hitches. The first, um, they're designed to actually tension the rope. So the first one is called the trucker's knot. Okay, and a trucker's knot, you get a bite like that. And you can either just do a simple the hand like so or you can do like a figure of eight I'll come down here a bit well figure of eight knot uh, like a like a show going goes in sort of like a figure of eight formation or what I have seen some people do is an alpine butterfly so basically you just do a couple of twists like so and then you take the loop underneath and through like that. And that's what we're going to use for this one. Then you come underneath, through. And what that does is allows you to tension the load. And you can wrap it around and tie it off of a few half hitches or so. And that gives you more tension. Okay, so that's the truckers not. <clears throat> Next of the three, just to undo this uh, alpine butterfly, it's called the uh, truckies knot which is much more similar. See, the problem with the truckers knot you still got this knot that you have to untie every time you get the load off. The truckies knot, what you do is just make a loop, pull through, then Still gives you that. Oh, whoops! That thing's dropped over. My uh, dummy load. <laughs> um, so we've got the truckies knot round, and then tied off. Like so. Now, while we've got the truckies knot here, I'm going to show you a little trick that I learnt. It was actually from the net, I can't remember where it was. But then you've got to 
There you go, you can pull them off. So let's let's do the uh, truckies knock again. One thing you can do when you thread it through your loop, if you thread it through your loop again, you can pull it tight. When you pull it tight, it self locks. Okay, and then you can tie off quite neatly and happily. That's just another trick. So you have to thread it back through to unlock it. Okay, so that's the uh, truckies knot. Still difficult to untie. <laughs> okay, now the one that I was taught, um, the uh, uh, third one, was, um, I was taught by a truck driver, and it's 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 a knot that you have to to learn. It's famous in Britain. It's not even used by the scouts or the well, it's not used by the navy, but it was used. I think the scouts called it a trailer hitch, but I'm not sure. But apparently, you have to learn this to pass your truck driver's test. What you do is you make a bite. I'm over the top, it's called the dolly's knot, and you give it a twist and you pull it through. Now that is called the dolly's knot, okay? And uh, a truck driver taught it to me. And one other trick, he said, if you need to get a little bit more tension, you could do a second. And so, yeah, so then you can just tie it off like normal. Now, one trick you taught me, and I think I'll have to, uh, I need to get a little bit more tension. I'll just do another little dolly knot up here. Okay, I'll do that again. <laughs> so, do a quick dolly knot, twist, through. So, if you need to get a bit more tension on the rope, which I don't think I'm going to do it now, I'll do it, move it all the way up there. It down here. So if you need more tension in the rope, one thing you can do, once you get your dolly knot done, you give it a pull, you can then do a second dolly knot. I don't think we've got enough rope for it, so you do a second dolly knot down here, and then round again, and you've got like a double pulley thing. You can use the same trick with the dolly's knot, the trucker's knot, and the truckie's knot, but I haven't got enough rope for that. Okay, now sometimes dolly knots don't work. I have seen one guy, what he does is he actually does two twists around that loop. That kind of makes him look more of a more substantial dolly knot. And a bit more of a reliable one. Okay, so uh, yes, that's all the, the dolly knots done. Now what the can show, yeah, if I take it off the load, I might be able to show you the double dolly knot method. Um, so, there we go, one dolly knot here. So what I can do, I'll pull that tight, and then do a second dolly knot, <laughs> and then run out of rope. Anyway. You, 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 you get the idea. Okay, so now I've shown that that's probably one of the main ropes you'll use. Um, to finish off with, there's a very special knot, which I think, uh, because of its name, I, I like it. And uh, yeah, here it is. Okay, because this is uh, for. Uh, Okay, so quick release knots. Now, since it's for uh, for drivers, let's do uh, quickly. Now, quick release knots. There is one you can do where you just basically make a bite. It's what the, the, the uh, folding a rope like that's called a bite, and then you do a, a quick bowling on the bite, like uh, so. And then you get this weird quick release knot. What I like to do is a thing called the high women's hitch. Now this is not a load bearing hitch, it's just for those times when you need a quick release knot. Um, so, okay, you come around. So, to go quick release knot, so you've ridden into a town and you are uh, a bit of a, a villain and you go in to Wild West Town, so right, I've got to tie my horse up. So you put your loop round, the end that's attached to the horse, you pull that through 
in the end that you're going to grab hold of, pull that through. You, you, you basically pull that through, pull it tight. The end that's going to your trigger end, the end that you're going to grab of the reins that, to ride off with, pull that through. And then you've got uh, the Hoeman's hitch. Now the thing about this is, if you go to the uh, saloon and uh, to order a whiskey, and oh no, it's Sheriff Johnson. You run out, you can grab your reins. So horse can't run away. You can grab it and it's still, the reins are in your hand. Now it's not a secure knot, but I have seen on a Japanese, I think it's a Japanese or a Chinese YouTube channel, I'll put a link down below. He does his high women's, he does a high women's hitch. It's quite interesting how he does it. So he pulls his loop through, pulls the horse thing through, pulls that tight, then he wraps it around the horse end before pulling it through. Which I thought that's interesting. And somehow that makes that more secure. Like a more secure, I think there's probably another name for the knot. I'm not sure what it is. If any of you guys know, put it in the links down below. So there you have a slightly more secure high women's hitch. Okay, now you go off, you have your whiskey, and that relentless Sheriff Junction is still there. Run out, grab your thing, give it a yank and still the reins are in your hand and you can gallop off your horse and get away. Okay, so that's all the knots done. So uh, thanks guys.